Hi, welcome to the screencast for the Topic 9 test. Topic 9 test, uh, people did pretty well on Paper 2, a lot of 3s and 4s. And Paper 1 is really what people uh, had more difficulty with. So I'm going to try and concentrate on um, where things might have gone wrong, or where things could have been easier for you on the multiple choice. So number 1 is the multiple choice question. It says magnesium is more reactive uh, is a more reactive metal than copper. So what you're supposed to uh, realize from that is that that means magnesium will give away its electrons to copper. And that's really all we need to know. And so which is the strongest oxidizing agent? In other words, what's being reduced? And reduced means gaining electrons. Well, we just said magnesium's going to lose them. So if magnesium loses them, then copper ion has to gain them. Now that's different than copper metal because metals don't gain electrons, they lose them. So I'm guessing a fair number of you went with C, um, saying the copper metal was reduced, but copper metal can't be reduced. Copper metal, I mean copper metal, yeah, copper metal can't be reduced, only copper ion can be reduced or gain those electrons. Number two asks, what happens to the Cr3 plus ion when it's converted to Cr? 4 2 minus. And a question like this where it's giving you a lot of options, I prefer to just come up with my own decision and then look and see which of theirs matches. So I'm going from Cr3 plus to Cr042 minus. Well, this means I have to have a minus 2 over all charge. I've got 4 oxygen at minus 2 each or minus 8. So I need a plus 6 charge contributed by my chromium, and I only have one chromium. So that one chromium will have to have a plus six charge. Board's being difficult as usual. So one chromium at plus six. So I can see that my charge is increasing. And if the charge increases, that means it's losing or being oxidized. So the only answer that fits with that is D. So number three says, which equations represent reactions that occur at room temperature? And these are all halogens. So I've just written up in the corner here the reactivity of halogens. Fluorine's the most reactive than chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And remember, the halogens take electrons, or in other words, they're going to be reduced. I guess my board's not so lined up. Um, and they're asking which ones occur at room temperature. Room temperature is another way of saying that they're exothermic. They don't require any energy be being put in. Or another way they would say this is which of these are spontaneous. So in the first one, chlorine has to be more reactive than bromine. It is. The second one, iodine would have to be more reactive than bromine. It's not. And the third one, chlorine would have to be more reactive than iodine. It is. So one and three would both fit, whereas the others, uh, number two does not fit, so the other three choices are no good. So number four is the first uh, question from paper two, the first free response. People did pretty well on this. It says two reactions occur in the manufacture of bromine from seawater. Our chlorine gas reacts with bromine ion to form chlorine bro ion and bromine. So chlorine is gaining electrons. That's what nonmetals do. And the bromine ion has to be losing those electrons. So it says explain by reference to electrons. Now this is where they were picky about getting your... Um, your full two points, is you had to talk about the electrons. You had to let me know that chlorine gains electrons, and you have to let me know that bromine loses them. And that's why it's considered a redox, because one gains and one loses. In number two, they want you to state and explain whether SO2 is oxidized or reduced. So at some point, you have to tell me that to get your second point, or to get the third point, I should say. And it says, by referring to the oxidation numbers of sulfur. So you also have to come up with an oxidation number for SO2 for the sulfur in there and for the sulfur and sulfuric acid. So the SO2, I've got two oxygen at minus two for a plus four. I've only got one sulfur. And so for this to be zero, that one sulfur would have to be, uh, I'm sorry, it's plus four because this one's minus four up here. So then my sulfur is going to have to be a plus four. In the H2SO4, I've got four oxygen at minus two for minus eight. I've got two hydrogen at plus one for a plus two. That leaves me with a plus six overall, one sulfur to take care of that. So that means I've got sulfur at a plus four, and it's become sulfur at a plus six. And since the oxidation number is going up, it is losing electrons or being oxidized. 
Number five, this was a pretty easy multiple choice question. What are the oxidation numbers of the elements in H3PO4? So I've got three hydrogen that are going to have their plus one. I've got four oxygen that are going to have their minus two. So for this to be zero overall, I need a plus five. I've only got one phosphorus to take care of that. So when I look at this, uh, the only one that fits that is B. Number three says a voltaic cell is made from magnesium and iron half cells. Magnesium is a more reactive metal than iron, so that means magnesium is going to lose electrons, and that means iron ion has to gain electrons. So um, when you look at these statements, electrons are lost from magnesium atoms. That's true. Concentration of Fe2 plus increases. That can't be true because they're going to be gaining the electrons over here to form iron. Whereas here, we're going to be forming magnesium ion and losing those electrons. Electrons flow from the iron half cell to the magnesium. That's just the opposite. And negative ions flow through the salt bridge. Now, the salt bridge is always the tricky one. But remember, over here, the, the cations are being removed. So the cations are going to flow this way. And over here, the electrons are being sent across. So the anions are going to flow this way. So it says negative ions flow through the salt bridge from the magnesium to the iron. That's just the reverse of what it should be. 7A, um, define oxidizing agent in terms of electron transfer. And this was only one mark, but IB was very picky about this on their mark scheme. You have to talk about transfer. So transfer means you have to tell me that one species gaining electrons and causing another to lose them. So the oxidizing agent is the species that gains electrons and thereby causes another to lose. So you got a half mark if you only told me it's something gaining electrons. Number two, deduce the change in oxidation number of chromium in the reaction below. So Cr2, O7, 2 minus. I've got seven oxygen with a minus two charge for a total of minus 14. I've got two chromium, and I want a minus two charge overall. So two chromium to give me a plus 12 would mean that um, it's initially plus six over on this side. And on the other side, then, it lets you know it's plus three. So it changes by three, or you could have said decreases by three. And then was it oxidized or reduced? It was reduced because it gained three electrons. Number eight. Which statement is correct for the electrolysis of a molten salt? So molten salt means you have Na plus and Cl minus. At least NaCl is an easy one to use. And so if I draw a quick sketch, I should be able to figure out that the positive sodium is going to move toward the negative end. The negative chlorine is going to move toward the positive end. And sodium is going to gain electrons or be reduced. Chlorine is going to lose electrons or be oxidized. So the positive end is my anode, and the negative end is my cathode. So it says positive ions move toward the positive electrode. That's not true. It moved toward the electro uh, negative electrode. Opposites attract. A gas is produced at the negative electrode. Cl2 would be the gas they're talking about, but Cl2 is going to the positive electrode. It says only electrons move in the, electron, in the electrolyte. That's not true. You've got electrons being moved by the battery in the wire. But those are ions that are moving in the electrolyte. And then D, both positive and negative ions move toward electrodes. That is the true statement because sodium moves one direction and chlorine ion moves the other direction. Number nine says consider the following spontaneous reactions. And if you look down below, they want to know what the strongest oxidizing agent is and the strongest reducing agent. Well, what they're really asking is what's the strongest reducer, what's most likely to be reduced, what's mo most likely to be oxidized. So if you look at it, first of all, you should remember metals lose electrons. So it should be a metal that's going to be oxidized. So Ag plus is a poor choice here. And then on the other side, it should be an ion that gains electrons. So Ag and Zn are a poor choice here. So really, we're just left with silver and zinc. And if you look at those equations above, iron does react with copper. So you can see I've started a chart here. That means iron's more reactive than copper. Copper reacts with silver. So I can put silver at the end of this activity series. 
and zinc can take uh, can force its electrons on iron so zinc is the most reactive so looking at silver and zinc zinc is clearly more reactive and the most reactive and in terms of metal most reactive means um, the biggest loser or the strongest reducing agent and then silver is uh, ion is the most likely to gain or be the strongest oxidizing agent so that's how I came up with B as being the correct choice number 10 asks which statement is correct spontaneous redox reactions produce electricity in an electrolytic cell this is just part of the you know the learning that you just have to realize electrolytic cells use electricity to force redox but spontaneous um, redox reactions produce electricity in voltaic cells they produce voltage B electricity is used to carry out a non spontaneous redox reaction in a voltaic cell no they've got A and B just flip-flop that's the electrolytic cell is when you use electricity a voltaic cell is when you produce voltage or produce electricity C says oxidation takes place at the negative electrode in a voltaic cell and the positive electrode in an electrolytic cell and um, what you hopefully remember is that it is the oxidation takes place at the opposite charged electrode in each so the question is does it take place at the negative electrode well the ele negative electrode in the voltaic cell that's where electrons are being lost from one metal to go over to the other metal so that would be the negative electrode and at the positive electrode that's where the negative ions are being attracted to pick up electrons so yes C would be true D if we take a look at it just to see why it's incorrect oxidation takes place at the negative electrode that is true as we just figured out and reduction takes place at the positive electrode in the electrolytic cell and again um, hopefully remember that oxidation place takes place at the negative electrode in one but at the positive electrode in the other because it's the opposite process happening in question 11a they're asking which is the oxidizing agent which is the reducing agent so of course this is whatever's being reduced or gaining electrons and this is what's being oxidized or losing electrons so when you look at it, the tin's pretty easy to see what's happening because it goes from SN2 plus to SN4 plus, which means there have to be two electrons on this side, and that's indicating that it lost or was oxidized, therefore making it the reducing agent. The MnO4, um, by default, would be the other one because H plus is going to be a plus one oxidation number on either side. But just to check, MnO4 minus would mean the MN has a charge of well I've got four oxygen at minus two for a minus eight I want a minus one charge and I only have one MN so this is gonna have to be a plus seven charge so I've gone from N MN plus seven to MN two plus on the other side so then when I go to balance this the SN two plus as I already indicated becomes SN four plus and takes two electrons the MnO4, and I left the oxygen on, it doesn't matter if I had it on or added it back on, but it's going to take five electrons to become Mn2 plus, to be oxidized that thoroughly. So with the five in one equation, one half reaction, and the two in the other, I'm going to have to multiply the MnO4 by two and the Sn by five. And when I do that um, and add this up to finish balancing, I'm going to need eight hydrogens I'm sorry 16 hydrogen by the time I double it and eight water to get this balanced and then finally number 15 what's the reducing agent and again they're just asking what's being oxidized in this reaction well metals are gonna be oxidized because metals lose and so you should be able to look at this fairly quickly and realize the Cu the Cu2 plus isn't even an option because it shows up on the react or on the product side the H plus you should be able to figure out has no change so you really only have the choice between A and B and then it's a matter of whether the of whether metals gain or lose electrons and again metals are going to be oxidized metal ions will be reduced